big one today. You know what's coming up. It's so close. Tax day Ooh. just around the corner, which it's very strange to be talking about tax day in the summertime. Um, <laughs> Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's thinking about the 4th of July and the long weekend coming up. But yes, tax day is coming up. It's, well, 15 days away now. Um, it's getting really close. I know a lot of people have already done their taxes. So it probably won't be quite as crazy as tax day normally is. But if you have not done your taxes yet, um, there's still a chance for you to contribute to your IRA for 2019. And that's uh, pretty impressive. So not only can you contribute right now for 2019, but you can also contribute, of course, for 2020. But it's not that way for every single type of IRA. So there is more than one flavor of retirement account. Uh, everybody knows traditional Roth. Well, most people know Roth. Um, but there's also SEP, Simple, and even an individual K, which is a 401k for the self-employed. Um, it's been called a solo K, individual K, IK. Um, basically, it's a, it's a one-person uh, 401k that is for sole proprietor business owners and either a spouse or one partner. So it's actually a really flexible tool. And we're actually going to have an upcoming um, Facebook Live just covering individual Ks and all the amazing things you can do with those. But I digress. Let's talk about contributions. Let's start simple with traditional and Roth. First of all, a traditional IRA is now for people of all ages. Now, if you were in RMD in 2019, before they changed the rules with um, the SECURE Act, uh, you cannot contribute for 2019, but going forward, you can contribute no matter what your age is. Um, so a traditional IRA is for individuals of all ages. Uh, you must have earned income and the deductibility or the ability to write off this contribution on your taxes is based on your annual income. So if you make within a specific range, you can write off the whole thing. If you make a little too much money, you can write off part of it. And if you make too much money, you can still contribute up to the full amount. You just can't write it off on your taxes. So here's the benefits. Um, besides what I just talked about, you can take a tax deduction on that contribution. It comes right off the top, it's awesome. Um, so if you're filling out your tax return and you're going, holy cow, I owe taxes, think about maybe contributing to your IRA and lowering those taxes before you finish filling that out. And it wouldn't be the first time we had somebody saying, hey, I need to contribute to a traditional IRA so I can get my taxes under control. I'd rather give it to myself than the government anytime. Um, you can lower your current tax bill and contributions can be made at any age if you have earned income. Again, not if you were in RMD in 2019, but going forward, that will be true for you as well. And if you ever have any questions on what earned income is, I know the earned income might seem confusing because any kind of income is earned when you think about it. Um, there are certain parameters and requirements. Um, for example, if you receive a W-2, that is earned income. So you just want to keep that in mind of if you're not sure, feel free to call us. We're more than happy to help you as well as be able to go in detail about your specific incomes, your, your requirements. Let's say if you have more than one um, or if you're older and on like Medicare, Medicaid um, and your income requirements are a little bit different, we're more than happy to assist you and give you all the different kinds of education and options. Absolutely. Okay, so there's a traditional, now there's a Roth. Now a Roth is a post-tax contribution. So you don't get a tax write-off, but of course a Roth does grow tax-free. Uh, love those tax-free benefits. So this is again for individuals of all ages. Um, you must have earned income again, and you must be within a certain um, Maggie. So you wanna tell them what a Maggie is? 
It's marginal adjusted gross income. Right. So I know we use these kind of acronyms and terms. And if you're ever unsure if we're using it, feel free to call us and let us uh, let us know that you have questions on that. Just what we said in the previous slide. There's a lot of back of office financial terms that we use very freely because we use them every day. Um, there's no dumb questions. Uh, we understand that there is a different type of financial language that we use on an everyday basis that your regular Joe does not. And there's no shame in that. We are here to give you all the education so you can use the tools to be able to do what, what you want. Before I keep, before Diana keeps going, I did want to mention with a Roth IRA, even if you have already filed your taxes, you can still contribute to the tax filing deadline. And you have 14 days, not including today, 14 calendar days to get that account open and to put that money in to be able to basically get all of 2019 now in July 2020. So without further ado, I will let Diana continue. <laughs> Absolutely. So some people can't contribute to a Roth if their modified adjusted gross income is too high. Um, you can do a conversion, which I think was follow the money part two. Um, so you can do a backdoor Roth with a conversion. But if your Maggie is in the right range, you can contribute fully to a Roth. Um, and then you get, here's the benefits, tax-free earnings and no taxation on withdrawals if your plan has been qualified, which means you're over 59 and a half, have a qualifying life event, or and or you're, you have to have had it open for at least five years. Um, you can invest for retirement and still access your funds. And contributions can be made at any age as long as you have that earned income. So let's talk about money. In 2019, and actually in 2020, this one stayed the same this year. Some of the others changed, but traditional and Roth did not change. If you're under 50, you could put in $6,000 um, towards your traditional or your Roth, or a traditional and a Roth. The thing is, you can only contribute up to 6,000. So you can't put 6,000 in each of them, but you could put 3,000 in one, 3,000 in another, or 6,001, nothing in another. As long as the aggregate is 6,000, you can contribute to a traditional and a Roth. Now, if you're over 50, you have that additional $1,000 that you can contribute as your catch-up contribution. So I can put in the extra 1,000, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about a SEP. Uh, a simplified employee pension plan is for sole proprietors, independent contractors, self-employed partners, corporations, or S-Corps. And yes, if you have an LLC, you can have a SEP. So the criteria is um, self-employed individuals who receive earned income. So even if that business is just your business and it's just you, you can open a SEP and contribute from the SEP. Now the difference is a SEP um, is money that comes from the business. So it's it can be used like profit sharing, um, but it doesn't come out of your paycheck, but it is based on what you pay. So let's talk about the benefits. Um, it has low startup costs and administration fees. It helps you to reduce business taxes, not personal taxes. It's actually really, really easy to set it up and run it. Um, a lot of people like the simplicity of the SEP over the IK just because it is very easy to sit, set up and maintain. Um, and contributions can be made to your traditional IRA. So um, the good part about a SEP is contribution deadline is tax day plus extensions. Now that's really cool. So you can go beyond the 15th if you filed an extension, although this whole year seems like it's Full of extensions for all of us. So it's an again, it's an employer contribution, and it's up to 25% of your con of your compensation, up to a maximum of $56,000 for 2019, and in 2020, $57,000. 